very complicated. So a paper prototype is actually very useful to very, very quickly and efficiently um, make play tests. Or, well, not exactly play tests, but you can quickly spot things that might be a little too complicated to develop down the road instead of spending months or maybe weeks trans uh, making these design choices. And when you do them on paper, it's very easy to say, oh no, uh, you know what, maybe this idea doesn't work, so we can change it into something a little simpler or something different. Are we transmitting on? Yeah, apparently we're now on both Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. Okay. Yeah, Pedro notified us that Twitch is on. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I have so many things yet to learn from you, Benji. <laughs> our dear streamer friend. All right, well, uh, let's go on, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, well, I was just talking a little bit about what a paper prototype is. We, we already covered that last, last time, but for you guys that are uh, tuning for the first time, a uh, paper prototype is like a very simple board game where you can test out the basic game mechanics of the game. And that's how we're developing, well, redesigning the Bermeja puzzle. We actually didn't do that so efficiently last time, so we've learned from our from our mistakes, we also uh, he, uh, heard your feedback from the first playtesting session of the Bermeja puzzle, and that's how we came up with this uh, kind of detective detective game where you have to interrogate, search for, search for clues around the ship, and well, Javier was actually talking a little bit about uh, interesting locations and and things that the, that the Spanish sailors actually did during their voyage in order to find the, the potential route to the Indies or Bermeja. Yeah, all right. Um, and um, I, I just had an idea while you were mentioning this. Mm -hmm. I believe that's one of the advantages of being live with you and also speaking with Erasmo, that maybe we could play when this is uh, ready to be played on paper with our users. Let's say that we have the uh, enough materials drawn and we have the story text mm -hmm. and when it's ready, maybe next week, maybe in two weeks, we can tell Avatar, Benji, paint the gang, the Lovecraftian gang, play with us live. So we will simulate being the computer and what you guys tell us, we execute in the, in our paper prototype that way we can more quickly realize if this is fun or on paper with real users we can find out if it's not working so some of the of our viewers would be like for example the, the cook that you find in this part of the ship another would be the no no, no. they would control anton uh, and we would be the, the NPCs. Uh, yeah, and they, they would say, for example, I want to go to the cellar. Then, okay. on the screen, I would point, now you're here, let's say, now you're in the cellar. And this is a dialogue, we read it to, to them. Instead of actually programming, designing, developing yeah, 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 a understand. build, this could be faster. Yeah, actually, that, that could work. Um, so we know if it's really fun before just actually in, building. In the case of, for example, this this particular screen, the the, the ship, uh, that was going to be in in this situation is going to be used a lot. So maybe not program it, but I believe like a simple JP, uh, JPEG that we could show on screen could could actually save us a lot of work. Well, the, the quickest way to portray this, I'm all for it. Oh. Uh, Okay, just then to validate something. Do you guys, for example, if you see a drawing like this on camera, uh, do you actually see uh, very well the, the different locations of the ship? We can just use more light and it can be a bit more highlighted oh, because okay. that's quicker than working on Unity. Okay, uh, that could work, for example, if we were talking like one-to-one, -one. let's say that we have uh, one person that is trying to play test with us, this, this version, but what would we do if, for example, we're talking with two or three people at the same time, and let's say that the first person wants to go to the cellar, the second person wants they to They would have to make the a decision themselves, I don't know. Um, 
I, I am very sure because our users are very friendly that they can agree on a course of action. They could have like boats or something that if there's five people, well, we got three boats for the seller, so we're going I mean, to I Pedro seller. can say, well, the first people who replies at the question that we are right now making, that where would, would you want to go first? That can be picked. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Or maybe they can agree because I'm sure we will have like five people voting. Yeah, it's not an issue. All right, so that could be an interesting idea. Thank you guys for the inspiration. <laughs> now, uh, we were mentioning about interesting places that you usually don't see in games and in movies that we could explore here. Um, one way for the anecdotes to be interesting, more interesting than the text, I believe it's going out, going to different places. The human mind, when we go out, we feel variation, even if we're making the same thing, and that would be conversing, which is actually text in our game. Uh, so we, so in order for it to be really interesting, feel very uh, varied, and since we have a great artist, I want us to go to really strange different places. One of these places is um, where people are playing. What I didn't know, and I and I was reading the text, um, thanks to the to Raquel, our historian is that the Spanish were very, very crowded. You, you don't see that in, in usual media. Usually the ships have plenty of room for everyone to run and get ready to battle. But the reality of these now ships is that people were very cramped all over the ship and they had at most one meter of personal space between them. Picture think, that. Think, for instance, in uh, for, for example, the movies of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yeah, those they, are pure they, fiction. They, for example, they have their their crew quarters. They might not be the the cleanest crew quarters, but everyone has like their their hammock or their their beds when they can rest for the day. Uh, however, in what what happened in real life with these uh, Spanish explorers is that they could actually they they had to sleep on the upper deck because there simply was no space for. Uh, on any other part of the ship. Yeah, the now ships were very small. And not only that, but actually they preferred to sleep outdoors because based on what you told me, the the lower the lower you you descended on the ship, the stinkier and more putrid it got because they have well no refrig refrigeration method, so everything they they brought for food, water, supplies, eventually it started to rot. And since they kept everything in the basement, the lower you went on the ship, the uglier it got. Yeah, definitely. Um, so with this situation, what I want us to visit is the recreation room, the place where more of the crew are enjoying a moment of tranquility. And it would be super crowded, this lounge room and the guys would be playing, but they would be playing in a strange way. For example, they would, uh, they all had these chests where they would cram everything. They would cram from their clothes to sometimes even food. They would have one chest, one barrel per person. All well, their if, belongings would be there. Well, if they were lucky, there. they actually shared, some of them shared a lot of chests. And they didn't have chairs, they didn't have tables, what they used in order to, for these functions would be also these chests, these barrels. So I want uh, Anton to visit where one of the potential uh, people who have been close to this Phantom Island and they would be playing cards but all super cramped and even in order to um, to make the functions of the game, they would be using maybe uh, parts of barrels in order to have some tokens or things to, <laughs> to exchange. And the more rela relaxed guy, the one that is in the most luxurious place to, to rest, he would be like lying down on top of three or four chests maybe. And um, that could be a bit jarring, I believe. Yeah, because normally you see like the, if, if they are playing like some kind of card game, you see they have chairs, a, a desk, maybe not the most luxuri luxurious ones, but that's actually very far from the truth. They played on the, on the floor on, on this 
improvised sittings with chests or parts of barrels, things like that. Yeah. Things were really nasty back there. Yeah, lots of Spanish would die. The more we see of their limitations, personally, the more respect I feel for the Spanish that managed to find the, the Americas. All right, so that's an interesting location, one. Another one that would be very interesting is a, a real tool that the Spanish used in order to navigate. And that's the astrolobe. The astrolobe was a tool that they used in order to find where the sun is. They could calculate the angle, and thanks to this angle, they could find their their latitude. So they could uh, use this data. If they had their latitude, and they also knew their starting point and their speed they could more or less identify where they are right now in their map. So that's one of the more um, trustworthy pieces of hints that Anton can get in order to reach the island. He would have to naturally go to the upper deck and there he would use the astrolove. You guys would use the astrolove. Uh, fortunately, calculate the right angle. It would not be just a straightforward at just looking like this, no. You, you would have to make some uh, decisions there. Not to, right. mention, not to mention that the astrolobe actually looks like a magic compass. Yeah, it looks really cool, the astrolobe, yeah. And I can help you with the other one. I mean, what streamer has this level of high tech? <laughs> <laughs> I can picture Benji like this. <laughs> All the pros that watch us. Yeah, All right. Probably, yeah. <laughs> so that's a second location. Now let's think about the third location. The Castillo. No, that would be another one. I am thinking about going to the cellar to um, where the horses could be stored. Something very strange would be that animals and the crew would be mixed together. And they would be mixed together, the animals and the crew in these Spanish ships. Uh, Jael is with us now. Hey, uh, Jael! Hello! Monsignor. Um, we were talking about interesting locations that you usually don't see in Spanish ships. So one of them would be this cellar, where the storeroom, where they would have mixed together people and some animals. Yeah, normally you think that there would be like very um, well-built stables in a ship, but in this case, there weren't really any stables. The animal, they just put it whenever, wherever they could fit. Yeah, wherever they could fit. And in our story, and this is real, uh, sometimes the ships would sail with, before they were ready. For example, the expedition of Cortés, as I mentioned in the previous episode, they did that. They had to go out before they were ready. So in our case, we will go to look for this very creepy character inside his office. This place stinks. The deeper you went to the ship, the crazier it got, the more it would uh, stink. And we would visit him at his office. It would be this place surrounded by animals. There would be a horse, there would be pigs, chickens. And uh, sadly, even they would be somehow apart, these poor animals. They would be apart from this guy, even in this very crowded ship. And why would they be a bit distant? because there would be something that is very threatening for all Spanish ships, la broma. La it's broma... A, it's a kind of parasite, I Yeah, think. Uh -huh. it's a parasite that ate the ships. The so wood, yeah. The, the wood, ate wood. Yeah, the wood of the ships. So there would be a part of the ship that visibly is more fragile, that could maybe break in some weeks, and even the, the animals could sense that something is wrong in that part. But since it's the only part that has more or less space, even though it stinks, there will be one guy there that is just using that as his office. 
So that's another colorful character that our Anton Delaminos, our protagonist, would visit. What do you think of that? That sounds nasty and very Lovecraftian. <laughs> yeah, a bit Lovecraftian. All right, and finally, uh, yeah, around the Castillo de Popa. You usually see the Castillo de Popa as this luxurious place where the captain would be looking at the seas, but there's an, again an opportunity. We didn't know that one of the uh, standing responsibilities would be to actively hunt for rats and pests. They would have search parties, permanent search parties, because if they, if they didn't hunt for them, they could overrun the ship, they could become pests. So we were, we we're going to visit uh, a searching party for rats that is actively hunting for them and they would have their uh, alfanges and they would be kind of ready for battle in order to search for them. An alfange is a cutlass kind of sword. Yeah, a curved sword that the Spanish used. All right, so those are our locations. What do you think of them? Yeah, they sound uh, very interesting. Very and, and the thing is that you're not going to do exactly the same on each of those locations. Like, just talk to the people that the the crewmate that is on the on this location and hey what do you know about Bermeja? oh i know this oh okay so i got my clue no uh, there's actually going to be like um uh, at lack of a better word like mini mini puzzle for each of these locations and based on the personality of the per of the person that you find in each of these locations you have to do something different for example let's say that uh, part of the search party that, that Javier talked about the people who were hunting for for um, vermin, rats, etc, etc. Let's say that this person is very is someone very untrustworthy, something that someone that lies a lot or, or is very boastful about things that never actually happened. So if you get a clue for, for from this person, let's say this person tells you that, oh yes, I remember that Bermeja is, I don't know, at the north of Cuba. For example, and and that they have been there, of uh, course. Yeah, I of know course, Bermeja. I've been there. Of like course. I gave you the tour. Yeah, I could I could go there myself if I wanted to. And this person tells you like, yeah, uh, Cuba is just south of Bermeja, or Bermeja is north of Cuba. You you could actually gather a false hint in that in that in that instance, because you will get the the sense that this person is really not very trustworthy. He lies a lot, or maybe he he's drunk. So you have to actually think a little, not just read the entire text and, oh, it's a given that then that Bermeja is north. And on another location, maybe you, you don't exactly get a, uh, a clue. Maybe you talk with someone that says, well, I've never really been to Bermeja, but they gave, but I know someone that, that went there and he gave me this and he gives you a small item. And maybe you have to analyze the item and say, hmm, well, there's like some inscription in here, uh, so if I decipher this, or maybe search for for information elsewhere that can tell me a little bit more about this item that item that I got, then maybe I can know that oh okay, Bermeja is further west than I thought, nor uh, not east like this other character told me. So it's gonna be like a little bit of a treasure hunt and detective work, and. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about the characters that you're going to meet in these, in each of these locations. Yeah, very quickly. Um, first, hi, Hoss. Hi, Berenice, that they are joining us. Hey, Hoss. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah. Uh, about the characters, we have an advantage, and that is that, fortunately, we have written very colorful characters, and I have made sure that they are very distinct. Yeah, imagine the cook, the ship's cook, is also the one hunting the rats. Yeah, and that, that will be the leader of the rat hunting party. The cook. Yeah, and, and Anton uh, hopes that he, he, he doesn't do both jobs at the same time. <laughs> All right. Um, another, another of our characters, we make use of the awesome fans that we have. 
many of you guys uh, sent to us pictures of yourselves to have cameos in our game. Yeah, uh, uh, just answering. Yes, exactly, Jose. It's, it's going to be like analyzing items, items from Resident Evil or Layers of Fear. That's kind of what we have in mind when you make this uh, yeah, scavenger. Yeah, this hunt. puzzle for in order to find the location of this ghost island. Um, I was saying that um, we had uh, an idea that maybe we could include some of our fans of our players in our game as cameos. So you guys have already submitted a lot of pictures, pictures yeah. and yeah, you are already characters in our game. I thought that for this, we could expand your roles a bit more instead of just dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first cameo, that's everything you did. You showed up at the game and you, and you died, died a horrible because death. Because all that was it. so many people and died in order to find the new world. And surprisingly for me, many of you were actually okay with just dying. Yeah, but, personally, okay. I would love to die in a cool game. <laughs> I am going to die in our own game, of course, yeah. Um, we, we will expand your roles and I have already asked some of our people who have cameos about what villainous trait they would want for me, to, for me to write their characters in this puzzle. Um, the good Isaac, Isaac-y, yeah, one of our friends and one of the people who conquered the very first playtest, uh, he wants to be sarcastic. That's not so villainous. Oh, but that guy I have in mind, he will be in the bottom part of the ship. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> welcome to my throne. <laughs> <laughs> and even the, the pigs could be like, oh, God, this guy is disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Isaac. I know you're a stunning uh, British gentleman, but <laughs> we have to make colorful characters. Yeah, it could be sarcastic. And another of our friends, uh, Nick, from Nick Levels Up, the streamer. She told me that she wants to be, uh, oh, let me let me give you the exact word that she, ah, a trickster, I recall. She wants to be a trickster, all right? So she could naturally be where the guys are playing some cards mm -hmm. and you can see how she is cheating. Maybe you have to win at the, at the card game with her. I believe that could be a bit long, so I don't want to make uh, another mini game inside yeah. a puzzle. It doesn't have really to be long. Think, for example, um, there was this uh, this not mini game, but this event in this RPG with both love, uh, so we call them two. You had to win a coin toss with one guy who actually cheats. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, could, yeah. it could be as simple as that. You don't have to make like I don't know a whole poker session, but something as simple as that. Like yeah, I'll wager this information of Bermeja with you, if you win a time cost with me. And as you maybe play along with this person, you get to realize okay, this guy is obviously cheating because yeah. of I don't know ten time causes, he's only lost like one. Yes, yeah. that's, that's not. That's feasible. an interesting one. Yeah, I will write that. Yeah. Um, as we are talking with you, talking uh, between us, we're also reaching naturally great ideas at the moment. So uh, I will write that uh, in our revision too. Um, when you are talking to the person playing... The trickster. The trickster. You could uh, defeat him in a coin toss. A simple game that doesn't require a mini game inside a puzzle. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's a good, a that's dice a good idea. roll, something like yeah. that. The trickster. Every time I hear that term trick, trickster, my mind naturally drifts to Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Man, I love that character. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's about the, the colorful characters. We have Isaac, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. the we trickster. have yeah, the trickster. We also have the chef. And maybe the chef could be uh, one of our uh, cameo friends. Um, the developer of an amazing game, Wildermint. They also submitted themselves as one of our cameos. So he could be the chef, I believe, yeah. Um, we are having right there three parts and then there's the part of the astrolope 
I wanted to use... So, uh, sorry, uh, this one so is no longer necessary? Maybe, yeah, we won't use that one because you didn't have to go all the way up in order to use the, the Astro Wolf. Okay. I'm just going to write it for the moment like... Uh, we, like we were contemplating maybe make another location the very top of the ship. Uh, or think about that, I yeah. Think. But uh, I believe it would, it would not be as colorful and we don't need that many locations. I believe with four very distinct... Well, on, on the other hand, I think it would be actually quite, uh, it could be, well, you know how our artist is like very, very talented. I think it, he could make a very uh, breathtaking uh, scenery if, if we commission him to... However, you know that our uh, players right now are more focused on the story, getting well, okay, this yeah. uh, prototype shipped faster. Okay. Well, yeah, eventually it's, it's not it could completely. Be, it's yeah. not necessary at the moment. Yeah, maybe. eventually it could be. I, I mean, I could also ask our historians if the astrolove would make sense to use it all over there in the top part of the ship. I believe it's not necessary, but yeah, I mean, we could explore it. I actually have no clue how the astrolove would. Yeah. It's astrolove or astrolabe? Astrolove. Astrolove. Astrolobio in Spanish. Um, for you, I enjoyed that I have to learn how to navigate as a 16th century pirate. <laughs> Yeah, Sailor. yeah, the sea is a little ways off from here, but somehow we actually know how to sail now. Yeah, well, little by little. Uh, I believe yeah. that that's one of the advantages of our game. You usually see, oh, there's ships, yeah, just use what you know from the movies and that's it. The perks but, of being a game designer. <laughs> yeah, but um, since I really adore history and I know that you guys, our users, are really into lore, um, showing the limitations and the ingenuity that these people had to use is very impressive. All right, so for the astrolobe, I was thinking that we could have um, the, young, uh, the young sailor, do you recall him? Luis. 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 Maybe Luis would be the one that is there with you. Or we could have Carlos. I don't want to use Carlos or Pedro because they already have enough time, enough content. Yeah, so I Luis am, is actually kind of underdeveloped. Right I am now. inclined more towards Luis. And he's a really interesting character. He's a very young sailor who even pukes because he is dizzy while sailing yeah, through the ocean. First time on the sea. <laughs> first time on the sea, yeah. That, that would happen, sadly, with the Spanish. So yeah, that's, that's another one. Um, so he will actually help you like use the astro, astro Anton teaches him. Will explain Luis, and that's the beauty of writing well. Um, we use that opportunity as exposition. When Anton is explaining to Luis, he's also explaining to our dear players. Mm, okay. We actually talked last time that we were going to remove the time limit to completing this puzzle. Uh, does that mean that there's also like no immediate sense of urgency like we have to to readjust our course right now or we're going to end up somewhere else yeah there is an urgency uh, anton uh, says that they are very close to the point of no return and mm -hmm. that's why he gets away the helmsman who mm -hmm. has made a terrible job and that's why he has to take matters into his own hands okay well then just um let's be careful with this dialogue that we're going to write with louise because if you're in a hurry and and very close to reaching the point of no return it could be a little bit tricky that anton with this state of mind talks to louise and says oh yeah i'm gonna take the time to teach you how yeah to no do worries this. yeah naturally that's a risk but i can um, I can actually use that because Luis would say, but sir, uh, why are we wasting time with numbers? I mean, you just point us into where it feels right. No. And Anton would tell him that, no, that's how you get killed. <laughs> no, you damn savage. <laughs> no, we always have to make time in order to find our correct path. Uh, that's one of the challenges that I had yesterday. How can we say that Anton de la Minos is the best pilot, our character, our protagonist, if he has trouble finding Bermeja? Mm -hmm. 
I didn't want to show him like a doofus who had to ask everyone for help and that way he would not feel as the best pilot. That's why I have in mind that this kind of dialogue would work. Mm -hmm. Many sailors did navigate, as I just explained, Luis would, would say it like... Yeah, let the force guide your way. Yeah, almost let the force yeah, guide you. So if we see that Anton is trying at least to use a, a useful tool that the Spanish did have back then... Yeah, it shows that he's, he's more different. skilled yeah, than, than more the rest skilled. of the crew. Yeah. You, could, you can still fail, you can still get the reading from the astrolog wrong, that would depend on the player, but at least story-wise, it does differentiate him from the rest of the crew. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for those of you tuning in, um, uh, like you asked Hoss, like if this is a puzzle kind of in the veins of Resident Evil, uh, yeah, but we're not going to be very... Um, we don't want you to to fail the puzzle and then just try again on a new playthrough. What we actually want to accomplish is that even if you don't solve the puzzle correctly on your first on your first try, the story will continue, but in a very different way. Let's say that if you first completed the puzzle successfully, you did find Ber the island of Bermeja, and something happens there. However, if you don't find it, if you make a lot of mistakes and you end up uh, steering the ship to a completely different place, something else will happen in the story. You're not going to get like a game over scream or you die, no, nothing like that. It's just that the story will change. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of our game. So yeah, we, you, we, you, could, uh, you could theoretically fail the puzzle, but that doesn't mean that you fail the game. Exactly. Um, to see if it works. All right, so we have uh, Luis as a colorful character. Another thing that's interesting that uh, we I mentioned with Erasmo is that we're going to make up the uh, take advantage of a real expedition that happened just before Anton de Alaminos, uh, our games. Hernandez de yeah, Hernandez de Cordoba that also helps to create a sense of urgency. The expedition of Hernández de Córdoba discovered Yucatán and Raquel, our historian, explained to me that that expedition was trying to find some islands that were north of Cuba. And these guys, even with Anton de Laminos, who was that expedition's pilot, those guys, instead of going north, went all the way south and yes. reached Yucatan. Yeah, Take those guys resources. were really bad at navigating back then. In that expedition, uh, Anton was already a better, veteran sailor, or was his first? Oh dear. Yeah, and Anton de Laminos, the historical one, was already the pilot major and a good pilot between them, among them. All right, so we are going to have mentions of that expedition because it helps us to create a sense of urgency. That expedition, Hernández de Córdoba, practically got killed all of them. Those guys ha were attacked by the Mayas and in order to escape, in order to get fresh water because they were dying of thirst, Anton de Laminos um, sailed the, the survivors to a safe haven that he already knew, that was close in his mind. And they reached Florida. <laughs> the Florida Peninsula. Yeah, so instead of going to their base that was closer to Cuba, no, those guys were all the way to, to, to Florida. And they had more troubles there. They did find water, but eventually when they managed to return to Cuba, uh, many of them were already dead, including their own captain, Hernández de Córdoba. So that's why Anton de Alaminos, our protagonist, he esteems a lot his, his captain. He is very loyal to his captain. Um, however, he does feel that he has had mistakes before and many of the crew know that terrible things can happen just as with Hernández de Córdoba. Mm -hmm. And those guys were rich. Hernández de Córdoba was a rich man and they had plenty of resources in their expedition and they still failed massively. So I am going to include hints about 
that expedition, um, the, the veterans here, how they were, were veterans of that expedition. However, you said that that expedition was trying to find something that wasn't in any way related to Bermeja. So how would those hints, do, do you imagine they will help you actually find this, sure. this place? The objective of these guys was different, but they did reach Yucatan. Uh -huh. And Bermeja, supposedly, is close to Yucatan. Uh, okay. It's an island just west to Yucatan. The first guy that actually mentioned uh, Bermeja is called Santa Cruz. I don't remember his name. That's his last name, Santa Cruz. Did he by any chance have anything to do with Hernandez de Cordoba? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because there is the name of the Spanish sailor who, yeah, took note of the supposed location and description of the island. I don't know, that's a good question. Yeah, Alonso, Alfonso, something like that of Santa Cruz. Yeah, does, did the real sailor who uh, took note oh, yeah. of so their name comment? <laughs> Yeah, maybe they were actually looking for little Cuba at Miami. <laughs> That's yeah. why they reached Florida. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe that was it. Of, uh, the Hernandez. They they desperately wanted a Cuban sandwich. <laughs> of the Hernandez de Cordoba expedition. And, and we're going to play with a few interesting things. For example, we're going to see how many places here in the Americas were named. The Yucatan Peninsula is named that way because that expedition, Hernández de Córdoba, when they encountered Mayas, uh, naturally they could not understand each other. So the Mayas, supposedly one theory, is that they would continually say something uh, like Yucatan and that would be uh, something in their language. I, I don't recall exactly what it would mean, something like uh, my home is over here. And the Spanish, who didn't speak naturally Maya, they would think that that was the name of that place, Yucatan. Yeah, the Rio de Grijalva, the Grijalva River, is named after another uh, captain of another expedition, Juan de Grijalva. He's also going to appear in our game. So, based on your choices, I was thinking that uh, there could be uh, some places that are named after some characters of our game because that's the way the Spanish would would work like uh, the, the current la, Yeah, like the current perhaps we could say this is the current of Isaac <laughs> Yeah, he might appreciate that. Yeah based on what happens in our game what decisions what interactions and by the way, uh, it's a shame, guys, that we cannot read their your comments completely because since we're very yeah, our cameras are a little f far away from from you. Um, maybe we could actually open the well. Yeah, we, I could. There. I could open Facebook. Maybe uh, I actually tried to to see the video here in my computer from Facebook, but it just kept loading and loading, and it never played. That, that's something that ha can happen because we're using all of the bandwidth of Mexico. Yeah, bummer. Yeah. Um, let's see. Is no? No, I don't think that's the one. Oh. Yeah, it's oh. this one. Okay. Yeah, there it is. All right. I am opening the Facebook stream. There's also people on Twitter. Yeah, how are you guys? All right. Which uh, we also have some people on Twitch. We're looking for Little Miami, says Berenice. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Husky, I will translate what he says. Instead of removing the time limit, wouldn't it be better uh, to poner un por tiempo una pista adicional? Uh, have, have, a, have a clue that is limited to. You can only get it in a specific time limit. If you take too long to find that clue, maybe it is removed. Um, could That's be. an idea, but we have to be careful because right now what's happened in what you have seen... Yeah, we actually made a, pl a previous playtest before this version of the, of the puzzle and that actually included t a time limit. And people actually found it uh, restrictive, frustrating and not very fun, so 
For this version, first we're going to try doing it without a time, a time limit. And then if we manage to find some way that your suggestion actually works in our favor, Husky, we can implement it. Uh, I think it's actually, it has potential. For example, you could maybe use the astral, the, the astral lobe. Uh, maybe it can give you different results. It depends on how long it, it takes you to, to use it and use it correctly. But in the meantime, for this version, we're going to have it, keep it like food for thought, but I'm, I don't think we're going to implement it on this iteration of the puzzle. Yeah, maybe, maybe later. What's happened is that some players um, feel, I don't know, anxious and they are clicking things randomly. So adding the... The, the, the pressure of a time be, limit. Yeah, mm -hmm. only discovered in a time limit. Maybe it could be... Um, even more restraining for them. Yeah, we're going for from the simplest version and then we're going to keep adding complexity. Because yeah. if we start very complex, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, but it's happened before. But it's an idea. It's an interesting idea. Definitely time can make very interesting things. All right. Um, yeah, no worries. I will tell you we'll have new comments. Yeah. Um, there's also Pedro helping us. All right. So uh, what other thing can we have as progress today? Um, da, 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 da. In terms of the art, while our artist is really good, I am of the position that for the moment we should make the art. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> awful. I do have a piece of art that I do. For example, yeah. A degree of video game design and this is the result. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's glorious. Yeah, that's one of our Oh yeah, characters. one of our characters. <laughs> Looking good. But in order to really find out if the puzzle is working, uh, art can be a distraction. Eventually we'll have better art, but if the mechanics are really fun, if it's really easy to understand, clear to understand that even with the simplest art, then we can achieve it. Yeah, right now we don't have to program anything or Modify a really high quality art. Project. Yeah. Um, so we'll continue drawing. Yeah, like that. It's okay. Just put the name of the character and that's it. Yeah, definitely. And after you guys play with us on the stream and you validate if it's working, if we are achieving our two objectives, then uh, we can ask that uh, validated design to be uh, better made by our artist. Yeah, he's really good. Really, it's really, really good, good, definitely. All right, so if that's it for this design session, we have achieved some interesting things. Mm -hmm. uh, we can finish for today, continue working, and we'll have another session for you. Uh, Pedro, our awesome community manager, community sorcerer, will help us to- Spider mastermind. To announce what's the next time we can work with you guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, great to see you, Bigfoot. <laughs> All right, so it's been amazing to speak with you. Um, take care from sunny Mexico City. We're still quarantined, but gamer life has not changed that much, to be honest. Yep, <laughs> the life of a game designer. Game dev hasn't changed also that much, yeah. But it's really interesting to work with you. I do feel uh, more engaged with more accountability. We have the pressure of yeah, making and, something interesting for you. Yeah, it's it's always a pleasure to speak with you. I hear your comments. A lot of them actually are very, very good feedback that we actually used to make different iterations of our game. Uh, in the end, we're actually making this game for you guys. We want you guys to enjoy it, to play it, uh, to tell us what's right and what's wrong. And yes, your feedback is always greatly appreciated. All right, so take care, guys. It's been great to hang together. Take care, Jos, Berenice, Jael. Pedro, Jael, Bigfoot, everyone. Have fun. See you later. <laughs>